Hello, my name is Selena Levinson Drake and I'm Art UK's Learning and Engagement Manager. In this episode of Masterpieces at Home, I'm very fortunate to be joined by sculptor Lisa Traxler, who's taking part in our Masterpieces in Schools programme. Through this programme, we loan an artwork to a school for a day to inspire learning, thanks to generous support from the National Lottery Heritage Fund, Stavros Niarchos Foundation, R.K. Harrison and Hiscox. Lisa hopes to combine a studio visit with creative activities in an Isle of Wight primary school, inspired by her sculpture, When Schools Return, later this year. This series and the selection of the students' artwork is set to go into a show at local contemporary art gallery, Key Arts. Today, Lisa will explore one of the sculptures from this series in her studio at home on the Isle of Wight. She will then demonstrate a creative activity you can try in your own home. So let's join Lisa now. Well, hello, Lisa. How are you today? Hi, Selena. I'm very well, thank you. Nice to, nice to see you. Um, can you tell us where you are a bit today? I am in my studio. I'm very fortunate to be able to work in my studio, which is um, on the site of where my house is. And so I'll just quickly tell you a little bit about that. So where we live is the south of the Isle of Wight, which is off the coast, the south coast of, of Britain. Um, and where we're based, there is a World War II radar bunker on the site where we live. So it's amazing historically, it's really brilliant. So I'm actually in one of the Nissen huts, which was built to work alongside the radar bunker. So that was about 1941, it's the Second World War. Um, and so one of my huts is now my artist studio. And it was very derelict when we came across this building, but we've done it up a bit and now this is where I work. Shall I show you a little view? Would you like to see a view of the studio? Yeah, well, I'm very lucky because I have actually visited your, so can you show us the view? Because I think yeah. we, uh, people watching would like to see it. Because it, it really is where, where I'm situated really does demonstrate itself in my work very much. So I have windows out the back here that just sort of go right onto the sea. So there's a coastal view. And that's the messy end of the studio where I do my painting and construction. And then if I flip back round, we're actually going to be talking here at my, I've got a very big desk here. I'll just kind of swivel it a little bit. And you can see that's, that's where I work from and do a lot of my sculpture assemblages and notebook ideas and that sort of thing, sketching and stuff. So yes, this is where I am. Um, so can you tell us a bit about, um, for viewers who aren't familiar with your work, a bit about yourself and um, your background and your practice. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, I work across the disciplines of two and three dimensions. So I work in um, collage painting, but then I also work in sculptural form. And one informs the other very much and they work backwards and forwards. There's sort of a, the idea of relationship between the pieces of work and also the elements of the constructions as well. So, um, my work of recently, of the last few years, um, is very much based on um, defence architecture. I got very, very interested when we moved here. Um, the World War II radar bunker here is a beautiful, beautiful building. It's like a piece of brutalist architecture. So there's a lot of light and shadow um, that changes throughout the day. It sort of creeps across the building. The building itself has got beautiful texture because it's very rough concrete. So you can see all the shuttering marks where the builders put it up, which I find incredible really that you can run your hand over it and sort of have this, this idea of history really. And I also found that the bunker itself, the radar bunker, was covered in a, in a dome of camouflage, but I didn't know about this camouflage. So hence I went along to the Imperial War Museum to find out that knowledge. And this is when it got really, really interesting for me because I kind of stumbled across another type of camouflage from the First World War and it was called Dazzle Camouflage, um, yeah. which was, this, this sort of started to blow me away. So basically, I didn't know anything about this. So Dazzle Camouflage, um, it actually started in the First World War. So Britain was under attack by the U-boats all around the coast of the UK. Um, and the British government was, was desperate to try something to, you know, to sort of really sort of keep us safe and defend us. Um, so they listened to a plan by a marine artist called Norman Wilkinson and he came up with dazzle camouflage 
and it just seems quite a simple idea once you sort of understand it really. So in 1917, um, the first ship was dazzled, it was dazzle painted, and the idea of the dazzle was as a type of camouflage was not to hide the ship at sea, but it was to disrupt and to disorientate and distort the eye when looking at it. So the ship was painted on either side with a different geometric dazzle pattern. And then if the boat was sailing along, you couldn't see what speed it was sailing at, you couldn't actually see which direction it was sailing in, you couldn't see whether there were one or two boats, you know, sailing along together. So. This was just really, really interesting. And um, thousands of merchant ships and hundreds of naval ships were actually dazzled. So I just found that incredible to sort of understand this process. And how they actually dazzled the ships were, they would build very, very small model ships. Um, I've got a little idea of one here. This isn't actually one of them, but this is a, like a little replica one. And it's a little dazzle ship here. I don't know if you can see it. Now, these were painted by women artists at the Royal Academy and they'd all sit in desks at line painting away these little these little models and then these actual little model ships then were transferred to uh, I suppose it was a, a purpose-built test theatre and they were put on um, a rotating table so that as they rotated they were looked at through a periscope to see if this pattern was the most effective to be used yeah. and then the, the actual patterns that were effective they went back to um, into the Royal Academy and they were actually drawn up as technical drawings on sheets of paper. And these were then sent to the docks. And a lot, it was actually a lot of women that worked in all of these processes. They were painted on the side of the ships and the vessels. So an absolutely amazing find for me to sort of come across. Thank you, that's fascinating. So can you tell us which sculpture you've chosen to share with us today? Um, yes bit about why you selected it yeah so um i've got one of my sculptures here i've got it i've got it along here i've actually put it on a little turntable because actually it'll help me explain what's going on so this sculpture um it's made from vitreous enamel on steel and vitreous enamel is a, a it's sort of like a glass ink really and you paint onto the steel with it and then it has to be fired but it creates these incredibly beautiful sort of light filled lines and shapes with it it's just a, a, a beautiful medium to work in so I've worked with enamel and steel quite a lot um, and I actually go to a company on the island here which I'm very lucky and it's um, the company AJ Wells do all the signs for London Underground so if you've ever been on the tube train and seen a sign that's the company that does the same process as this so I go in and I hand paint all of these all of these pieces so this sort of sculpture for me this started off obviously with the research which was what I've been talking to you about with the dazzle and I also found um, when I was doing more research I went along to uh, Winston Churchill's war rooms at Whitehall and as I was walking through there and and sort of listening to all the history about it um, I came across one of the rooms and it was the communications room and it had a band of telephones, coloured telephones along the centre of, on the shelf and they were baker like telephones, they were beautiful and they were colour coded so you knew if that phone rang there was some information coming in or you'd use a certain um, telephone to send out information and they were known um, affectionately as the beauty chorus and I just thought that was just such a lovely, it, it just sort of I suppose it just gave a lovely impression of you know this lineup really of, of stars because they, all that communication was really important. So. This sculpture is called Beauty Chorus and it's actually Beauty Chorus G and there are seven other sculptures in this series. So the shapes sort of come from the radar bunker and that architecture and then the pattern and the surface design is very much from looking at the dazzle camouflage that were on the ships. So this is the sculpture that I wanted to show you today. I'd really like to um, talk uh, the viewers through perhaps doing a little sculpture like this, like a, a little beauty course, so perhaps a dazzle sculpture that we can, we can actually do. So what I've done is I've thought, um, I've thought about what we need and it's going to be sort of stuff that perhaps we just can find at home easily, so not, not difficult to find. So I've got a few things here. If I just 
if I just talk you through a few, a few of the little bits and pieces we might need. So I'm going to use this thin card, it's A4 sheets. So you need two A4 sheets, okay? Thin card or you maybe have some thick paper, but you can also use packing boxes. I know we've all been having lots of deliveries, so there might be some of that around the house. Also perhaps cereal boxes, if you've got sort yeah. of a few cereal boxes, you can use something like that. That's really good card, it's just quite a good thickness. And then also if you have maybe a few magazines around the house, just some, some colored bits to cut up. I've even got envelopes here that have got lovely patterns on the inside. So it's just something, just stuff that you might have around the house. And then the other thing I wanted to add to our basil sculpture is some texture to it. Because you remember I was talking about the walls of the bunker and that had a beautiful texture to it. And it really takes you to a part of that history and a part of where you are in that architecture. So I actually went down and did a few rubbings with, so some of them with pencil, some of them are with crayon, and I just rubbed over the, the areas of, and it just gives you some beautiful shapes. Now, I know that we don't all have bunkers in our back gardens. So what I thought we could do is, if you look around the room where you are, or perhaps you're near a garden or something, you could either rub on some brickwork or some decking or some shelves or some flooring, that sort of thing. So if you've got those pieces, get some pieces ready. What I want to do is talk about how we get our pattern then on our piece of paper. So I'm just put this up on a board because it's easier to maybe explain what I'm going to do. So just with a pencil, um, I just think it's really important to look really carefully at what we've got around us and I think if we've got a chance maybe during this time to actually have this space to look carefully we can see all sorts of things that really we usually overlook and that we don't usually see so what I'm proposing is we actually look around the room that we're sitting in and find some architectural bits or some shapes that we haven't noticed so I'm going to just do a little sketch and explain what I mean so for example perhaps we've got the doorway so I'll have a doorway. Perhaps that doorway's got a little bit of shadow on it. So I've drawn a little line of shadow. Perhaps there's some lines around the doorway. So look really carefully at the doorway. Just see if there's some lines there where the wood meets the door and joins it up. Then perhaps I want to put in the window that I've got. So I've got a lovely big window here. I'm not going to fill it all in. I'm just going to actually do that part of it. Maybe put a few lines where the doors are. Then I'm looking around a bit further and I've got a cupboard. So I can see there's a, a cupboard up in the wall. So I'm going to draw, and that cupboard has a lovely handle. So I'm actually going to put that handle in. But I'm going to make it bigger, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter overlaying. So there's my handle. And then next to that, I can see that there's a pile of books and I can see them from their side. So there's a pile of books there. And they're kind of a bit of haphazard, but that's okay. So I'm just drawing those in, that pile of books. Then I look further over at the floor, there's a, a pattern on the, on the rug. So I'm just going to add some of the, some of the pattern that's, that I can just see. It's sort of like a dash pattern. It's quite nice, it's just subtle. So there's a little pattern there. Then I can see there's some bits of sunlight coming over the, the floor. So I'm just gonna add those in. And then I'm looking, and on my desk, I've got a couple of pencils just lying there. And I think I might put one more thing in, which is just there, which is my coffee cup. I'm looking down at that. So there's, there's the edge of my coffee cup. So suddenly though, when I look, I've got quite a nice sheet of pattern. That's actually now my drawing of my room where I am. So what I'm gonna do with that is I actually need to do two of those drawings of the room, but they're two different ones. So there's the one I've just been talking about and drawing, which is the one with the door. There's one here. That's got similar things. That's also got some parts of light that I found that I really liked. So you need two of these sheets. And once you've drawn them, it's time to add some color into them, okay? And how I'm proposing to do the color is those magazines I was talking about on the envelope and all the rubbings, just start cutting out some shapes from all that. So we've got little triangles here, little shafts of light, and if I put them on, can you actually see what I'm doing here? Sort of putting these pieces yeah. on. I'm not actually filling all the shapes in, but I'm putting pieces next to it. So it actually looks like it's a bit more of a 3D effect. And some parts from the rubbing, I'm just going to add that. So place all your bits first. 
And there's also maybe some areas you might like to just colour in, do a bit of that dazzle design with some pencils. So once you've done all that and you add all your little pieces of collage onto your drawings, what we're going to do is I'm going to then show you how we make this into a three-dimensional sculpture. So let's take one of the sheets. I'm going to turn it down so that you can actually see what I'm doing. And I've just got a plate from the kitchen, just a small plate, and it goes on top of my sheet. And I just draw around it, just very simply. And what you need to do is cut that circle out, okay? Can you see that? So just cut that circle out. I want to cut it out. There we go. It'll give you that. Well, actually, lovely. isn't it lovely? Because then you suddenly get this piece of work where the pattern is, pattern is random. So the pattern is, you haven't thought too much about it, but you've actually covered this surface and it actually gives quite a nice texture. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to fold that over. Okay, just very simply. And then with a glue stick, if you've got one, you can use sellotape if you've got sellotape, but glue stick's quite handy. So glue it over. Okay, and then with a pencil, I'm going to just show you how we actually draw the slots into our sculpture because all my sculptures are slotted, so they so they rely on each other to work. So I've got one slot there and one slot the other side, and I'm just going to cut those out. Okay. Just very quickly cut them out to show you. Okay, done. Got our semicircle now with two slots in it. And if you can see, I'll just quickly bring you back to this one. Very much like my sculpture has a semicircle here. And this is the base where everything else stands off the sculpture to help it go 3D. So that's got slots in it too. So this is part of our sculpture that we've done. Okay, so that's the first part. All right, now we're going to do the next bit now. And that takes up your second sheet of pattern paper that you've been working on. Fold that bottom corner up to the top. So I'll show you it with a plain bit of paper because it's easier. So there's your bottom bit, fold it over, just like that. Very, very, very simple. And then you cut along this line here. So that's all you need to do. Fold your piece of paper and cut along that line. So that will give you, okay, there's my fold. I'll give you two pieces there like that. Okay, we're going to concentrate on this square and then we'll fold it back through so that we can see all that lovely texture and pattern that we've created and we're going to just glue that. You obviously can just spend a bit more time on, on your sculpture. And so there we have it. Okay, so this shape, really easy shape like that. So I like the chance it. pattern that you get, the chance. It's just yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. So, so front and back as well. And it gives you te te texture and the colours. And you know, though, that that's actually uh, it's going to be a sculpture of your room. So it's kind of quite exciting as well. So on this piece, what we're going to do is draw another. OK, going up and then I'm going to put another slot here at the back. So one here and one at the bottom. Just going to cut those. OK, that's one. And once you've started working on this, you can actually start playing around and doing all sorts of shapes with it. So I quite like that. I quite like that triangular shape. That's kind of nice. I don't mind that. What I might like to do is just cut into it a little bit as well. So I'm just going to put a little shape out of it. So I've really got some interesting shapes going on there. And if I bring across, I'm going to start putting some of this together. If I bring across my half circle and the piece I've just done and we slot those together we've got the start of our sculpture already if you can see okay so the final piece is this piece of paper the strip that we cut off for the bigger piece so right. what I'm going to do with that okay so that piece left I'm just going to cut it in half I've actually got two two shapes okay so these are my final pieces Slot that in there. This one actually goes up underneath, so I'm just going to have to pick up the sculpture. And that just slots underneath. There we go. And there's our very quick 
quite messy, but I kind of don't mind it too much. But there is a dazzle sculpture of my room. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lisa.